All right. So uh, we're going to look at different things on quadratics, okay? And I'm going to teach you some different stuff to consider. So when we get started, we're, I'm going to do kind of mini lesson of what things are. And that's how I'm going to refer to them as we start to solve things. And I'm going to show you some really cool ways to look at some things that will make life a little bit easier on you. But you got to understand what you're seeing. That's the key. If you're treating it like a new problem, blank page, you ain't never seen it before, then it's going to be rough. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Okay. Quadratics look like U's. They either open up or they open down. Period. That's all that we'll do. Well, they'll open up left and right, but we ain't got to worry about those. Right? That's X equals Y squared and all that other stuff. So we ain't got to. So we're going to look at the square root property of equations, which basically – when we get looking at it, it's a solving technique, okay? It, it solves real easy. And then uh, how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. Um, here's the algorithm for that. But I'm going to show you a really cool way to do that by drawing boxes. You, you like that? Or the boxes? You like that? And then uh, – uh, that burn it. Then we'll look at uh, – I think I put everything on here. The quadratic formula. Anybody know what the quadratic formula or where the quadratic formula came from? It's nothing more than a formula-based complete square because if you take this equation – I'll shoot. Sorry. Yeah, much. I'll show you that. If you take a quadratic in standard form, which is AX squared plus BX plus C, if you take that and complete the square on it, you will have derived the quadratic form. It's pretty cool. Don't take my word for it. Google it. It's great. But I'll show you how to do that with using um, basically uh, algebra tiles. Now, you can go with that, or you can do this. I'll show you both ways. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, uh-huh. Yep. All right. Here we go. Rocking and rolling. Shaboom. Yep. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it says solve the quadratic by factoring, right? So, there's a couple techniques that we're going to consider to kind of keep in mind is – we need to uh, find um, – it's A times C is something, right? And then something plus something has to equal 2X, right? Yeah? And I'm going to show you this. So um, – this is AX squared plus BX plus C, right? So the A is what? What's the A? 1 times what C? Negative 24 equals what? Negative 24, right? Most people forget to do A times C, right? And when you jump from a coefficient other than a 1, then you're looking at making a mistake. So – um, let's kind of consider this. 24. I need to find all the factors of 24, right? So the easiest way to do this is to count. And if you start to count, what do you start with? A 1. That's right. 1 times what will give you 24? Thank you. What comes after 1? Will 2 times something give you 24? Yep. 2 times 12, right? Will 3? Yep. 3 times what? Eight will four? Yep. Four times six. Now with five? So the next number is what? The next number is six, and it's already crossed over. So we're done. That's every factor when multiplied that will give you 24. Now, here's the cool thing. We're looking at a negative 24, right? So we're looking at the – well – Looking at negative, that means one has to be positive and one has to be what? So we're looking at something that is a difference of two, 
gonna be a positive two, right? So which ones, when you get done looking at the difference, will be a two? Which factors? It's 46, right? Okay. So I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'll just. Know if I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. So we're gonna have x squared. Um, it's got to be a positive two, right? So that would be plus 6x minus 4x minus 24, right, equals what? So I'm going to show you grouping first, and then we'll show you some other things. Fair enough? Because the majority of the time when they taught you, they taught you factor by grouping, right? So where did these two numbers come from? What is that? Well, they are the factors of 24 that add together to give you the middle term, the linear term, which is positive 2x, right? So when we combine like terms, we're basically getting our 2x, right? So we're splitting our 2x, right? Y'all agree? But that split of 2x has some conditions. They still have to multiply to give you 24. Okay, so now, so grouping is this. You got four things? You got two parentheses. Now you go two sets, right? Now what would be the GCF between x squared and 6x? GCF. The greatest common factor. X. Now, I want you to consider one thing. Okay? I want you to consider just one thing for me. Um, and you'll keep this to keep you uh, kind of straight. Um, when you're considering GCFs, you're looking at either a number, a variable, or the product of a number and variable, right? Guaranteed. It's one of those three, right? So if it's got variables in both of them, then it's guaranteed to have a variable you can pull out, right? To the lowest power. Now, not so much on numbers. just depends on if there's something to go into both of them, right? So consider that. Now, when I do this, I get x and x plus 6, right? I can very quickly see that if I redistribute it, I get x squared plus 6x. Anybody got any questions on that? I'll come in there in a minute. Now, once I get that first parentheses, my second parentheses is automatic x plus 6. Guaranteed, right? Now, here's the question. My second parenthesis is, is negative 4x minus 24. What do I have to do to negative 4x to make it be just x? Pull out a what? Thank you. So that would leave me x minus 4, x plus what? Does that look like when we split that polynomial, that binomial? Well, how about that? We have come full circle. So what do I got to do with these two factors now? Set them both equal to zero, right? Now, there's easier ways to do this, right? Of course, that's x equals 4 and x equals negative what? Negative 6, right? Yeah? Y'all okay with that? No? Yeah. Hold on. Let me go here and then I'm going to go there, okay? Because he's been waiting. He's been on deck. Go. No, I didn't. I bet. <sighs> no, all I've got to do is is find what my middle term splits to, and then factor my GCF out of here. And once I get my GCF out of here, that parentheses right here is automatically over there. Then I'm just asking my question, what do I have to do to negative 4x to get it to be x? Pull out negative 4. If I pull out negative 4 from negative 24, ladies and gentlemen, I'm left with a positive 6. So basically, I'm just dividing it out, right? Okay. I'm undistributing it, right? So here it is. This is split, kind of like multiplying, right? Do 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 I get that, right? So we're reverse engineering it. It's great. So the 
these become x minus 4, and of course my parentheses comes here, and then you take each one of those, set them equal to 0 because of property of 0 property of equality, and you solve, and you get 4 and negative 6. Now my question is this, poor goodness young lady, what does 4 and negative 6 mean? Well, they they happen to be two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24, right? But that's just a quinky dink when it's coefficient 1, right? So, go away. Sorry. All right, so uh, what is the 4 and negative 6? Huh? Yeah, they do. Are they, are they, the, um, are they your x-intercepts? They are my x-intercepts. Ladies and gentlemen, when you solve a quadratic, what you are solving for is where it's crossing the x-axis. Did you realize that? That's really what you're doing. And do you want to see something pretty cool? Four and negative six. If you start going boom, 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 boom in the middle, that's your age. <laughs> four negative six that's a spread of ten right so negative one would be your h that'd be your axis of symmetry that'd be h value h h like h and k right vertex oh my son no <laughs> all right hold up let me go here because she was on deck that Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. I got, I got uh, like six more ways I could show you. Let me show you this other way, and then let me show you one more way. And then, if you haven't covered yours by then, I will let you get up and nerd out all you want. Fair enough? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now you got to talk colors to me. Purple, black, black, black. <laughs> I should have switched colors. Okay, you remember when we took these and we said the first term times everything in the second? Second term times everything in the second? All I'm doing is bringing it back. That's all I'm doing. Take what's on the outside, put it in the parentheses, and then that. Mm hmm. What's this? Here you go. Uh, I better do. I better keep it like this. Ready? If I said multiply this, you'd say, based off what I told you, use first term, right? First term times everything in the second. Second term times everything in the what? That's how you're splitting. That's four. First outside, inside, last, right? All you're doing is re you reverse engineering. That's all you're doing. That's what grouping is, right? Yeah? All right, so let me show this. What you got? Hurry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, no. It's only when, listen, it's only when your A is 1, positive 1. Okay, so when you have conditional understanding, when your A is just one, there's things that work out and look like that. But when your A is not one, if your mind says, oh, it's going to be like that, then you and me hold small, dude. And we don't want that. Right? Okay. Mm. You looked at me like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This problem. Right. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna chase this one. Yeah, sure am. All right, so uh, we're gonna use some of the math off the other side, so it makes life a little bit easier, right? So here's x, right? This is a times c, and this is b. So I need to find what multiplies to give me a times c, and that has to be b. And we found out that uh, b is what? 
Well, that's negative 24, right? And that this is positive 2, correct? So we need to see what multiplies to give me that and as to give me positive 2, correct? So we had 6 and what? 4. And this sign of the B always goes with bigger. So that'd be negative 4. So ladies and gentlemen, that would be x plus 6 and x minus 4 equal to 0. x plus 6 equal to 0. x minus 4 equal to 0. Negative 6 and positive what? 4. Same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But, okay, what happens if you come up with a coefficient other than a positive 1? Well, what if it gives you crazy fractions? No, we don't deal with it. <laughs> we pray. Lord, help us get rid of these fractions, right? <laughs> no, you can't call me at 3 o'clock in the morning. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> That works. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. You sure? All right. Where's the young, other young lady? Yeah. Ha, yeah. ha, ha. This ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> anyway, but I'll show you. And I'll show you a really cool way to take this right here and do it with coefficients other than one and rock and roll all day long and never violate anything in math. You know that? You know how to do that? Ooh, I'm going to show you. I can use the same technique on coefficients other than a positive one and still get it. It's great, great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show you that. But I'm also going to show you grouping because grouping is the most familiar way, okay? Eh, I don't know. This ain't grouping. This is, uh, you know where I found this? God, off truth. Where I found this right here? And uh, the NCTM magazine that I used to get back in 2005, 2006, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. That was Nerd magazine. <laughs> and uh, this was one of the articles about different ways to solve a quadratic, to factor a quadratic. And uh, it's called the X method, right? So anyway, yeah? Hang on. You'll be able to watch the video five times, and you'll be okay. I promise you. Huh? huh? All right. So, uh, so Kyle said, "What? Well, we got a four. What are we going to do? Well, if you divide five by four, it don't go evenly. You got four, five fourths, dude. What you going to do? You convert that thing to a decimal. No. We ain't doing that. All right. Y'all ready? Okay. I'm going to show you grouping. I'll set up the two or the four components. Is that fair enough? Yeah, y'all okay with that? And then I'll show you the X. So we'll, we'll just, okay. So, uh, and I like this. This is A times C, right? And then this is the B. So I'll find out what multiplies to give me A times C, but adds to give me B. Fair enough? So that's why I like that. So here I go. I right, clean up all my little stray I do, but mo traditionally, most teachers teach. Most teachers teach it, dude. And uh, so I just got to be able to br build a bridge to bring you over to the, the cray-cray side. No. There ain't nothing cool about me, dude. I'm plaid in khakis five days a week. Yeah, they don't ever go out of style. I know. Be 80 years old. I'm in style. Hmm? Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> They're always in style. So what multiplies to give me negative 20, but adds to give me negative 8? Oh, man. Okay, so what if I don't say 2 and 10? Let's, let's do this. This is called a factor thing. I had an epiphany one day in class. It didn't happen often, but I had an epiphany. I was teaching ninth grade back in 2006, and I was like, we was factoring, and I was like, how the heck are we going to be able to get them to do this? They can't chew gum and talk and walk at the same time. So how are they going to be able to find all these factors? I mean, we had some crazy factors back in. And uh, Lord help them. 
going to the bathroom, coming out dressed was a challenge sometimes. So how do we get all the factors? It was. So one in 20, two go into it, or two times something, three, no, four. Okay, now five's the next number. It's crossed over to the other side. It's See, Adele was a math teacher. Hello from the other side. Yeah. So, uh, say, so it's negative, right? So I need to find the difference that's going to be eight, right? So what two numbers difference is going to be eight? Ten and who? Two. Now the bigger number is going to get the sign of the B. So who's the biggest number? Ten. So it's what? So I can check this very quickly. Watch this. Negative ten times two is who? Negative ten plus two is who? Got it right there. Love it. It's organized. It's all just nice and, nice and pretty. You ready? So here we go. Ah. You do, I what you do. Oh, you remember? You remember when I taught? Yeah. There's a reason why I taught you that way. One day, I'm announced to you. Okay. Y'all ready? So I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you all four factors. Right? I'm going to split the middle term. Y'all ready? This is great. You don't get this excited when doing math? Y'all don't get this excited when doing math? I, dude, this is the best, well, the second best job I've had. Hey, man, that was the best job I had, blowing up stuff. That was great. Let me, really, let me rephrase that. I was not blowing up stuff. I was tearing it up. So if you hear this and you think he's doing bombs, no. <laughs> okay. They pay me to the story stuff. So. All right. You can do grouping now, right? To put your two parentheses. Factor out a GCF, right? Get your nice parentheses. That's the second. And then you go from that, right? Then, okay. So let me teach you this. When you have this, when you have a factor, other than the coefficient of one for your quadratic term, then you're going to treat it just like this. Watch this. Now, listen to what I'm about to tell you because this works because I have not violated anything by doing this. All the rules of math have been followed. And they're precise. This will not ever, ever, here's my disclaimer, ever, ever, unless you do something, give you the factors. That means two parentheses when multiplied back together will give you the, the polynomial that you started with, right, the quadratic. There's no way that 4x minus 10 and 4x plus 2 will ever multiply to give you back that, right? You all in agreement? Okay, good. So there's my disclaimer. Guys. <laughs> We could have divided four out in the beginning, could we? Right? And then we'd have the coefficient of one, correct? Well, tell me where does it ever say when you start to factor a quadratic that you can't divide it later? Nowhere. None. Zilch. Period. So watch what I'm about to do. This is cool. You ready? 4x minus 10 equals 0. 4x plus 2 equals 0. Solve the equations, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. So, what do you think? You can divide that coefficient of that A out once you find out what your two terms are that are split in the linear, right? And it's good. You're okay. You haven't violated any rules of factor. Because there's nothing that says you can't divide it out in the end. And it works 
if it's factual, it works 100% of the time. 100% of the time. That's pretty cool. Now, for grins and giggles, if I wanted the factors, then pull the GCFs out of these. Pull the GCFs out, and then you have the factors. Okay. So, but you ain't got to. There's not a specific way we have to Yeah, you got to get the right answers. I see. I'm, I'm being facetious. You got to get whatever way you choose. does not matter to me. I'm not going to be there holding your hand, looking over your shoulder. Okay? Who's got the TI-36X Pro? Sweet Jesus. Look right here. This thing right here has got a, uh, it's got a poly solve right here. And you can type in that equation right there and hit enter. And it'll give you two roots. And it also converted to vertex form. Now, do you understand why I love this? It's $18 of the best money you'll ever spend. Period. $18. Yeah. No, you can't do that on that. Is that what we got last year or is this what we got? This one. So, when we got paid, what, what was that we were solving? We got two. These? Yeah, so is that... So we're finding what negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8, right? Yeah. B, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20, right? So those aren't the factors? They're no, the factors. these are factors. These okay. are unsplit in the linear term, right? Okay. Negative 10x and positive 2. Those, when combined, give you, guess what? So you're finding, you're basically finding what two numbers do I need to split? That's yours. <laughs> to get the linear term, right? And then you've got a choice. Either I can do grouping or X marks the spot, right? Whatever you choose, doesn't matter to me. Or type it in. Hey, you can graph that. Sure can, and, and find out where it intersects the uh, X axis. You can do it on that. Yeah. All right, y'all good? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Nah. All right, so um, if you've got all three terms and it says factor it, do it. You can factor You could do the grouping. You can do X marks the spot. doesn't matter to me. But when you have the quadratic term, now which one is quadratic term? So let me do this so that you understand what I'm talking about. And I told you I was going to do this, right? So that is the quadratic term it's quadratic term because it has a power of what two this is the linear term because it has a power of what one thank you and we call that c a constant now do you know what also you call that c anybody anybody no nobody knows we also call that c ladies and gentlemen Ready? This is great. We also call that C the y-intercept. On a quadratic in standard form, the constant is your y-intercept. Think about it. X is go to zero. Everything cancels except for your constant, right? So that's good to know. It's good to know. That C, that number's just been hanging out there? Yeah, that's where it crosses y-axis. Yeah, yeah. Useless information. Unless you need to graph it. And it's really good. All right, so tell me the terms we have in play. We have our quadratic term and our constant. Now, the method that you need to do this, you don't need to factor this. Uh-uh. You're going to solve this by what is called the square root method. Okay? Works simple. You ready? We need to get our quadratic term on one side and our constant on the other. And it just happens to be like this, right? Now let's isolate our quadratic term. Divide both sides by what? 9. That leaves us with x squared equals 4 over what? Ladies and gentlemen, how do you get rid of a square? You take the square root. The name or the answer is in part of the name. So take the square root of this side as well as, guess what? That side. And you take square root, you have a plus and minus. 
So this gives you x equals, well, you remember yesterday, or yesterday, looks like yesterday, Monday, we talked about when you have a radical underneath, or a fraction underneath the radical, you can split it, right? So that's really plus or minus the square root of 4 over the square root of 9, right? Which is nothing more than, guys, plus or minus 2 over 3. Done. There's your two factors, positive two-thirds and negative two-thirds. Works like that every single time. Okay? Yeah. So, like, okay, it's four over nine, right? Mm -hmm. Both of those numbers are from square. Mm -hmm. so, what if it's not perfect? What if it's like three over five? All right, so the question is, what if it ain't perfect squares, or what if it's something that's just kind of hose bomb or crazy? Uh, most of the things that you're going to be asked to solve like that are either going to be end up with a perfect square or just a single number that when you take it will be irrational, like 37 squared 37, right? Plus my squared 37 would be like 6.1. So uh, you can – you're probably – nine times out of ten, you're not going to come across a fraction that you're going to take square root on that is not going to be a perfect square because – You'd have to rationalize it, right? So, uh, like we do to rationalize. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you come across it, yeah, you just still got to rationalize it if it doesn't simplify, right? So, any questions? Much easier than trying to figure out what gives you this that's going to cancel, right? Work smarter, not harder. I'm not sure how they want you to represent. If they give you two boxes, or if they just give you one and you can do it. They give you two boxes. One I would do, you put two thirds, and the other box you might minus two thirds. That's it. That's it. Okay. Y'all ready? Hang in there. It'll be okay. I promise you. Huh? I am starting to slow down. <sighs> okay. Tell me what terms you see. Linear term. You see a linear term? <laughs> Quadratic term and constant. So how are you going to solve this? It's called the square root what? So I'm going to add 27 to both sides. So I got x squared equals 27. Hey, guys. Watch this. And that's right around 5.15 or 5.16, right? Plus minus 5.16. Can't you rationalize that? Snap. You're right. My bad. My bad. So it'd be plus minus squared 9 times square root 3. So it'd be plus minus 3 square root. So what? There. Thank you. I am. I know. But sometimes you forget. You get so ingrained it. Oh, I got that plus or minus. And you forget that's a radical. You're exactly right. You forget it's radical. And you forget that you could pull out a perfect square. So don't. Don't do that. Don't fall into the trap I just fell in, right? Slow down. Take a breath. Don't, try not to have too much caffeine before you start to work your problems. You'll be okay. But see, I got y'all there double checking me, right? So I'm good. Questions. Okay. <coughs> Too much math. Already? All right. So they gave me a binomial, right? Squared, right? They said solve it by the square root property, right? It's just square root. Take the square root of that side and square root of what? What they're trying to get you close to or understanding is this is what you'll look at when you start to solve a quadratic by completing the square. You'll end up having a perfect square trinomial <laughs> equal to a number, right? And then you'll solve that by taking the square root of both sides, which will give you 2x minus 5 equals plus or minus what? 12. Now, so I'm going to add 5. So that's going to give me – let me come up here. That's going to give me 2x equals 5 plus minus 12, right? And then I'm going to 
हाँ हाँ आई एम आई एम आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू आई एम जस्ट गोइंग गेट इट राइट हियर एंड व्हाट आई मीन बाय दिस ओके सो आई गट फाइव प्लस ट्वेल्व डिवाइड बाय टू फाइव माइनस ट्वेल्व डिवाइड बाय व्हाट दैट्स हाउ आई स्प्लिट इट That's how I make two different ones. Uh huh. What you gonna do with that five? Yes, two things over one. You can't be splitting them. That's bad. Yeah, you can't. That's cheating. That's one going out. You got to go out with both of them. Uh huh. Mm hmm. That's seventeen over two, and this is what. Negative seven over two. Yeah. All right. So we can't we can't actually do five plus or minus twelve over two. Uh uh. Some... Well, here's your de determining factor. Is it simplified in lowest terms? If I leave it five plus twelve over two. Nah. So there's your answer. You need to simplify it down to a number. Now, make sure that that fraction is reduced, right? You can't have, let's say, you can't have twelve eighths, right? That can be simplified, right? Into three halves. Uh, you need to put it back to a fraction that can be simplified or is simplified, I should say. <laughs> All right, y'all good? Yeah. Are you saturated? Is your brain saturated? Yeah. We lost our radical. Oh, one forty-four is a perfect what? Oh no! All I'm doing is taking the square root of a square. They cancel out, right? Yeah, they cancel out. Yeah, sure do. All right. Um, I'm not sure what they want us to do with this. Well, y'all ready? I think they want us to. to okay, I, it's not factual, right? No. Yeah. So, uh, what if thirteen's a prime number? Ah, uh, good. But let's complete the square. Okay. So let's let's take this one, and I'm going to show you two ways to complete the square. Okay. <sighs> All right, and this is probably going to be the last thing because strap your helmets on about the blue brains. Seriously, be clean up on aisle three when I get done. Just know that you can use the quadratic formula when they say complete square. How am I going to know? I'm not going to know, Emma. Even on the final, it's multiple choice, right? So I'm not gonna know whether or how you solve it, right? I'll get your work, but I won't know, right? But <laughs> like, what do you think? But no, we gotta learn how to do this. All right, y'all ready? So first things first, move constant to the other side, right? Here's my algorithm. So. We're going to take, and we're going to minus 13. Now, you can only, I'm going to preface this with this. You can only complete the square when the coefficient is a positive 1 on the quadratic term. No ands, if, buts. You cannot do complete square until that happens, okay? So just be mindful of that. Now, take half of linear term and square it. So what's half of positive 4? Positive 2. And do what? Square it. Add it to both sides. So that's plus 4 and what? Plus 4. Questions? 
So I'm going to take half the linear term. I'm going to square it and add it to both sides, right? Fair enough. Now, let's change colors. Uh, write your perfect square trinomial. Okay. So, now, I'm going to explain what the heck I just done. <clears throat> when I took half the linear term, squared it, and added it to both sides, what I have created on the left side is a perfect square trinomial, which means... If I were to factor it, both of my factors would be identical. Hence, why I have x plus 2 parentheses squared. Because if I were to really factor it, it would be x plus 2 in one set of parentheses and x plus 2 in the other. Right? That is what's called a double root. Right? Double root. Meaning, if I were to solve this perfect square trinomial, it would only touch in one place. Right? And that would create a bouncing situation if you remember, um, what is it called? Multiplicities of polynomials, y'all remember that? I had a multiplicity of one, it passed through. If it had a multiplicity of two or evens, it bounced, right? Y'all remember that? Yeah, probably so. Where? I don't know. I, I Seriously, I don't know. I couldn't tell you what's going to happen up next week. I ain't looked that far. All right, so here's how you do the perfect square trinomial. What's the square root of x squared? x. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the sign of the middle term? Plus. What's the square root of x squared? 2. I mean, wait, wait. <laughs> square root of x squared is what? x. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the sign of the middle? Plus, now, there's something that I'd done, and I did it deliberately. When I took half the linear term, do you see where I took the sign and the number, put it in parentheses, and squared it? Because when you take the square root of 4, isn't that really 2? I mean, I squared it to get 4. If I take the square root of it, it's the inverse operation, is it not? So when you take half the linear term, this number is really what's going down here. Okay, square root, first term, square root of C, sine of the middle, right? That's really what you're doing to get that factored perfect square trinomial. Now, <clears throat> anybody know what we got to do now? Doesn't this right here, x plus 2 squared equals negative 9, doesn't that look just like a previous problem we just worked? Yeah. Did I tell you that this is setting us up for completing the square? Most certainly. So, ready? Take square root. Guys, I have a negative 9. Is that too much of a stretch now, tonight, to take a negative 9? That negative has to be a what? So that's really square root of 9 times square root of negative 1, right? Which is 3 what? Ah. Okay, so that's the kind of work that gets that, right? And then, last but not least, take my 2 over. X equals negative 2 plus or minus. 3i. Done. I don't know. I, see, I, I don't know how they want us. You have to do it twice. Okay. I Honestly, I saw it when my daughter was taking this class. 
but I didn't pay attention. So I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I could work the problems, and I still wouldn't be able to tell you because that's not some type of information that's going to stick, right? It's just not going to happen. Okay. All right, so that is my uh, – Is the step by step for uh, completing a square. Now, you ready? Let's do this again, but I'm going to show you how to do it with algebra tiles. Fair enough? All right, so. Uh, if that side x and that side x, that gives me x squared, right? So a big square is x squared. A rectangle is side 1 and a length of x, which is, guess what? x, right? And you can have open or you can have shaded. What do you think the open and the shaded are? Positive and negative, right? And then you can have a little block like that, which is one by one, which is a what? A one, right? Yeah? Okay, so this is pretty cool. Ready? So we're going to take the 13 to the other side, right? So X, dang, come in. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. X squared plus 4X equals negative 13. Now, I'm, huh? I sure did. Uh huh, watch this. That is x squared, right? Okay, now, watch this. I have four x's, right? So I need to split those evenly. Two on this side, and two on guess what? Now, Ladies and gentlemen, what is needed to complete the square? Four little bitty what? So watch what I got. Ready? This is X, right? And that is how many? One and one, that's what? That's what it means to complete the square. So I put x and x, that's x squared, right? My linear term, I got to take half of it. Why do you think you have to take half? Because you have to put half over here and half over there. Now, what is needed to complete the square? Four little ones, right? Four. Add it to both sides, right? Well, did I add it to both sides yet? I added it here, but I haven't added it where? So that would be x plus 2 squared equals negative 9, right? Really, I probably should do this here. Here. There. I added it here, and I have to add it, guess where? Right there. That's what the algorithm says, is it not? That's it. That's why they say complete the – because look, look at this side. X plus 2 and X plus what? What is our perfect square trinomial? That's it. I mean that works every single time. It is awesome. It even works when you have factors other than a 1. It's cool. It's so cool. All right. So they're warning us to uh, basically solve the quadratic equation by complete the square. And what I was referring to earlier um, last week when we were going over this, you cannot complete the square until you get a coefficient in front of the quadratic term to be a 1. So in doing that, this is basically what you're, you're doing. Um, we're going to move the constant to the other side, so uh, 
So I'm left with 2x squared minus 2x equals 5, right? So if I do that, that's basically moving the constant to the other side, right? Well, if I turn around and factor out a 2 uh, from the quadratic term, that leaves me with x squared minus x, right? So if I factor it out, some things are going to take place, um, and I'll show you why that's there, uh, and I'll underline it in a second. But I'm ready now to be able to complete the square on my quadratic that's left, right? So what's half a negative one? Huh? Right? Yeah? Right? Half a B, right? So I'd be negative one half, right? If I square it, it becomes what? Not one mm -mm. plus one fourth, right? And then notice that this two is going to multiply this one fourth. So when I add it to the left side, I also need to make sure that I am taking care of it on the right side. So basically, here's a two times that one fourth if I were to distribute it back through, right? So I got to make sure that whatever I pulled out of the quadratic term, I have to make sure that it's multiplying by that one fourth over there. Fair enough? What you got? I pulled out a two so that I could get the quadratic term to be a half a coefficient one, right? Because that's really the only way I can do it. Yeah? So now I'll just go ahead and tell you. That'll go. Um, half of a uh, half of b. B was what? Negative half. I'm negative one, right? Take half of it. It's negative one half. Square it. Square negative one half. You get positive one fourth, right? So wait, if I added one fourth to this side, I must add one fourth to the other side. That's exactly right. And there's that two times that. So I put my two times that. So I'm just keeping the equation balanced, right? So, um, all right, so we'll continue on. Uh, we have two. This is x minus one-half squared equals, um, what's five plus what's two one-fourths? Two times one-half, one right? So it's 5.5, .5, right? So that would be 5.5. Y'all agree? Okay. Now, divide it by what? Two. So that leaves me with x minus one half squared equals, what's 5.5 divided by two? 5.5 divided by two. 2.75? Right? Um, and then I'm just solving a squared equation from this point, right? How do you get rid of a square? You take square root of it, right? What you do on one side, you do to the other, but don't forget the plus and minus on the right side. So that's x minus one half equals plus or minus the square root of 2.75, right? Yeah? Now, it's going to get crazy because you're dealing with a lot of decimals. What? The perfect square trinomial is, see I took half of this, this is going to be your number there because it's really, what's the square root of one-fourth? One-half, that's right. And the square root of x squared is x, what's the sign of the middle term? So that's really what you're doing. And that's why I take the half of it, take the middle term, divide it by two, right? I put it in parentheses with its sign because that's really what's going here, right? Because if you square it, then got to take square root. It's inverse operations. So you're basically doing what you did. So that's why that's there. Um, so it's the numbers aren't pretty. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Uh, but it, it's at least doable. So let's kind of look at it some more before y'all 
I'm going to add one half. So x is going to be equal one half plus or minus the square root of 2.75, right? Yeah, I got to make that me a seven and not a two. Okay. So in your calculator, you can go one half uh, 0.5 plus the square root of 2.75, which is uh, 2.1583, and 0.5 minus the square root of 2.75, and that is negative 1.1583. So that's what x is equal, and that's where it's basically x-intercepts, right? So that's basically what you're doing. Now, let's say you don't want to do this by complete square. What other options do you have, folks? Huh? No. Quadratic formula. I mean, the quadratic formula is nothing more than a formula based complete square. It is. Okay? So you got to be mindful of that. So don't let it uh, scare you. Fair enough. Minus b plus minus square root, or b squared minus 4c here. All over 2a, right? Quadratic formula. It's a formula-based complete square, right? Because if you complete the square on ax squared plus bx plus c, you derive the quadratic formula. And back when we were using ThinkWell, we actually did. That was part of the <clears throat> problems that we had to do. All right. So just kind of know that that's a go-to. Um, I'm not sure that I wouldn't do it on that. I, I'm not sure I wouldn't use quadratic formula on that. I mean, it's just it's just easier. People get a little bit uh, comfortable using that. All right. Uh, for the following exercise, determine the discriminant and state how many solutions there are in nature solutions. Well, okay. If D yeah is greater than zero, D equals zero. And D is less than zero, right? D is the discriminant. Are you okay with that? So that means two real roots, one real root, and then of course, if it's less than zero, then you have two imaginary roots. Now, what is the discriminant? The discriminant is nothing more than this, b squared minus 4ac, okay? Now, that is the discriminant, but I want you to think about something. Um, I normally, when I do the discriminants, I normally consider, um, I always think about it being with a square root, right? Over that. Because that's part of the quadratic formula, right? So, <clears throat> so when I think about it with a square root over this, then it makes sense when it's less than zero that it's too imaginary, right? Because if you take the square root of a negative number, it's imaginary, right? Yeah. And if you take the square root of zero, then it's just what? Zero. So, um, and if it's something greater than that, then you got a plus and a minus. It's going to be two real roots. So, uh, I was teaching this one, I don't know, one summer over there in one of those rooms with a big door. I mean, the windows like this with a crazy guy that's a poster kind of hanging like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Normally, they have the A&P classes in it, you know what I'm saying? So, I was teaching over there one summer, way back. And I done this. He said, that's the discriminant. You just thought I'd have committed murder. I thought the person was going to come unglued. 
they just, oh, that ain't it. And I said, well, okay. But that's how I think about it because that helps me to see that I've got two imaginary, one and two real roots, right? That, that's kind of how my brain works. But it, it's the blue. It's not the green, okay? So just be mindful of that. All right. So uh, first things first, let's uh, – AX squared plus BX plus C. Well, A is 3, and then B is negative 8, and C is negative 3, right? So uh, negative 8 squared minus 4 times – uh-oh. Grab the wrong one. Three times negative three. Well, you know when you square something, you get a, a positive number out, right? So it's 64. Now, that's negative 12 times negative three would be plus what? 36, right? Y'all agree? So when you do that, 64 and 36, that's 100, right? So 100 is greater than zero, is it not? So therefore, describe my two roots, right? It says how many solutions there are and the nature of them. Well, they're going to be two, and they're going to be real, right? Real numbers. Any questions on that? That's strictly b squared minus 4ac straight from the quadratic formula. That's correct. Yeah, because plus or minus 100 is not – I mean it wouldn't be plus or minus 100. It would be plus or minus 10 on that part of it because you'd have to take square root, and you still got to divide by 2a and, and minus b and all that. But just looking at it from a discriminant standpoint, then yeah, it's, it's two real roots. So – All right, y'all good? No, I'm still copying. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not during this time. You can't ask class. What do you mean? I can do whatever y'all want me to do. All right. This is my favorite um, because they're basically math level one type problems. An object is thrown downward with an initial velocity of three feet per second. The relationship between the distance s it travels and the time t is given is given by s equals 3t plus 16t squared. How long does it take the object to fall 70 feet? So, ladies and gentlemen, how do we work this? You are? Yeah. You basically any – you know, if you wanted to see how far it, it took to hit the ground, then you would set it equal to zero, right? Right? And that's solving it. So uh, when your output, and that's your – is 70, so it's going to be set equal to 70. So you got 70 equals 3t plus 16t squared. And, of course, in order to solve a quadratic, what do you have to do, folks? You got to set it equal to zero. Always got to set it equal to zero. So um, you could do a couple of things. Doesn't really matter. I could have took everything over to the left hand side, or I could take everything to the right side. Doesn't doesn't matter which way, as long as you pick a side and go. So uh, I'm going to clean some stuff up and go 16 t squared plus 3 t minus 70. Right equals zero. All right. You want to do a quadratic formula? Since we haven't done one of those, is that okay? So uh, A equals 16, B equals 3, C equals negative 70, right? I always pull those out because 
it's just good math. And it lets you know what things ought to be, right? And I always write the equation. Because if you write the equation, you're less likely to have to memorize it because it's just kind of there. So, all right. So uh, every time you put something in, always make sure you put it in parentheses because that negative B, if that B was negative to begin with, then you would be looking at a positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so that's that's a common mistake that most people make. Uh, let me switch colors. All over 2 times 16, right? Um, that's 9. Let's see. What's that give me? Negative 4 times 16 times negative 70 is uh, plus 4, 480, right? All over 32, right? Okay with that? And then that's a four four eighty nine over thirty two. That's everything over thirty two, right? Um, so let's see. Is it? All right. That's some good. I like that when it happens, right? So negative three plus or minus. What does it tell you if that was? Since it was a perfect square, what does what does it tell you about the quadratic? Anybody know? Anybody know what it tells you if you if if the nah uh -uh. if the number underneath the radical is a perfect square, then it tells you that that quadratic was factorable. Okay, that's that's guaranteed. So here I go. Um, I go x equals negative three plus sixty seven divided by two, right? And x equals negative 3 minus 67 divided by 2. So what is that? 64 divided by 2, which is what? 32? Right? Oh. By 32. Thank you. I just copied 2. It's a copying error. My brain went. Okay, so uh, 64 divided by 32 is what? Two, and then well, that's negative seventy divided by thirty-two, which is uh, negative two point one eight seven five, right? Yeah. Do what now? Oh, sweet, she nailed it. You you get two answers, right? Because it's a it's a polynomial with a power of two, right? Degree of two, so therefore you got two answers. But this is a, a contextual problem. We can't have negative time, can we? So therefore we discard the negative answer, and the positive answer is the answer. So it takes two seconds for it to get to what? Seventy questions. But you can't have negative what? You can never have negative time. If you if you do. Then please let me know. I got some winning lottery ticket numbers I want to go back and get. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah. How far? Okay, right there. So uh, just be mindful of that because word problems are the ones that are going to get you. Okay. They'll get you like that because you get two answers. You're like, oh, which one do I use? Well, it's time. Time can never be negative, right? That means that's <laughs> well. Okay. All right, y'all good? Yeah. Oh. There you go. So I'm gonna do what this, right? Answers two seconds. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, good. All right. <clears throat>
nobody's gonna get mad because they think I killed somebody's uncle or something like that when I stepped on the bug. No? Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Well, he, he attacked me first, so it's fair game. Huh? What's that? No. Is that the same one that was on the wall up there? Yeah. Oh, man. Gotta hate that. Huh? huh? Not really. Nah. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. We're going to look at the length of a rectangle. Three inches more than four times the width. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the length is three inches more than four times the width. So what's the width? We don't have a clue, right? But we know that the width is four, three more than four times it, right? And the area happens to be, guess what? 45 square inches. So they want to know, find the width and everything. So that's basically length times width equals area, right? So x times 4x plus 3 equals 45. You're, all you're doing is, is solving a quadratic again. Width, length. Yeah. So uh, that's 4x squared plus 3x equals 45. And then I'm just going to move 45 to the other side. So uh, how would I do this one? Well, I'm not going to factor it. It's too big. Um, I'm probably not going to complete the square because if I pull out a four, I'm left with three fours, right? That's that's not good. So, uh, And I don't want to have three fours in square because the numbers are really, really ugly. So I'm just going to do a quadratic formula. So uh, A equals four, B equals three, C equals negative 45. So uh, negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that's uh, minus 3 plus or minus. That's the 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times, man, I'm in the same colors. I have to do this. There. All over 2 times 4, right? So uh, mm, that's negative 3 plus minus. That's uh, 9. So uh, negative 4 times 4 times negative 45. Ladies and gentlemen, 720 all over 8, which gives me... Negative 3 plus minus, that's uh, 729 all over 8. And I'm not sure if 729 is a perfect square, is it? I don't know. Huh? No, no, 25 six, six something. So, oh, it's 27. It's 27. So it is. So uh, here we go. So we're going to go right over here this way, and we're going to go negative 3 plus minus 27 all over 8 which is uh, negative 3 plus 27 over 8, and negative 3 minus 27 all over 8. And those are my answers, ladies and gentlemen. So what I get, 24 and divided by 8 is what? 3, and then that's negative 30 divided by 8. Well, that's, that's negative 30 over 8. Well, folks, first off, I can't have negative distance, can I? Distance can never be negative, so I know that my uh, negative 30 over 8 is not going to happen. Is it? Okay, so my values are, let's see, I got x, so that's my width. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is what? 15. There you go. And if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, that is what? 45. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But I was looking for, yeah, whatever my X was, whatever I defined my X at, 
I think it was the width. You're right. And then length was four times the width plus three, right? Yeah. Okay. I got uh, positive three for the width, and length was four times three plus three, which is 15. Yeah. All right, guys. Y'all good?